everyone, this is Kelly and I am here just to do a comparison video of the first edition and the second edition of the Al Goliath Tarot. Now I have had the first edition for quite some time. Um, I actually have a couple versions of it. My friend Patrick, um, this is a full uncut. I trimmed my deck, which I have. I'm not going to do a full walkthrough. I have a full walkthrough. Uh, I think I even show where I trimmed it. <clears throat> Any videos that I have, I'll link below so that you can see those. Um, this is a deck that I've used a lot. Uh, all of last year, I used it for my wheel um, or my year ahead reading and so obviously every single month I was working with it it was also sitting out on my working table because that's where I keep my um, <clears throat> wheel of the year and so I would also be able to just pick it up and use it for setting intentions or for um, you know just throwing some cards down uh, randomly because it was right on my working table so i actually have used this a lot um, i did not use it a lot for i didn't use it at all actually for client readings or anything like that um which I think I had said in my original walkthrough that i didn't really see myself using it for that um but some of it was the the size of it although when i trimmed it down it was a lot more manageable but it was still quite a large deck and i'm not opposed to a large deck in fact there are some decks that i think work really well as large decks in terms of visually but they are difficult to manage and they're difficult to do larger spreads or to put them with um, other cards that i'm using in different spreads so um, the size was some of it the um, glossiness was some of it it. Um, it doesn't tend to uh, record quite as well. It tends to get glare um, because of the way that I bounce light. Now, other people, I think, wouldn't have any issue with those types of things, but sometimes glare causes problems um, because I bounce the light off of the ceiling and then down, and it just causes glare so for recording, um, where I wouldn't have any issue with it just for myself. So, um, but, so I haven't used this a lot for clients, but I have used the deck a lot um, over the course of the year. It was my primary deck for my year ahead. So, um, so this is the box for the first edition. This is a box for the second edition, which is actually larger for a very good reason. I have, I did open this up um, and pull, you know, pull out the plastic and open this up. And um, so we're going to get to comparing. Um, what I will say in a nutshell, and I haven't looked through all of this yet. I haven't really got to look and feel the cards really well. Um, but what I will say from my friend Patrick who got it um, and uh, from what I have seen is that it seems as if that the creator has gone through with m all the issues that people might have had with it and addressed those, which again, they did not have to do. Um, I am a firm believer that we each, you know, as deck creators, we create the deck that we envision, right? We create the deck for ourselves. This is the deck for us. This is a perfect iteration of this tarot deck or oracle deck for us. And if other people want to come along on the ride and enjoy that, then that's a bonus and that's fantastic. Um, but in the end, the deck needs to um, meet the, the creator's vision. Um, and I don't feel that the creators have an obligation to meet the other people who want to come along on the ride's vision. Now, obviously, if you want to sell more decks, um, it's, if there are problems, then addressing those problems is going to be helpful for that. So I'm not saying that we, the consumers, don't matter, but at the same time, I find that um, it's really appreciated when they, for if they're going to put out another edition, that they take those things into account. But I don't think it's required at all. So it's like I appreciate it, but it's not required um, for a deck creator to do. So 
anyways so uh, you can see that this is more compact but the reason that this is a good thing in my opinion is because um, this is the guidebook from the first edition which I have really to be honest not read a whole I've read in entries to do the walkthroughs but I don't go back to this guidebook at all because I can't read this um, and even when I put on my glasses I still have a hard time reading it because the text is so small um, that for me it's just a struggle other people have great eyesight and better glasses <laughs> no my glasses work for me they're just um, kind of a hybrid and they do good for two different things but anyways um, so this isn't a book that I've read a, you know I don't re I don't come back and consult this now to be fair, I don't consult a lot of guidebooks. I like to read them through when I first get a deck to get a feel for what the artist is doing. Um, but unless there's some draw to it, there's for different reasons. Sometimes there's poetry in them. Sometimes there are messages from the cards that I just find to be part of the oracle, um, like with the shaman's oracle, the poetry, like with the Margaret Peterson. So there are a couple exceptions to that. But for the most part, I like to get you use the guidebook for really sinking into what the creator was attempting to do but then I tend to just use the cards myself so this wasn't a deal breaker for me um, but I do think this probably has some great things in it um, it just was too much of a struggle for my eyesight um, and so what's been done here now it's no longer a magnetic box it's a um, lidded box but it comes off really well no problems I tend to like to have there to be little notches but with this big of a box it didn't seem to be necessary um, and we're going to come back to the boxes in a second I just want to show you why the box is bigger oh, it's got a nice little tab um, and so you can see that the um, guidebook is significantly bigger um, different cover really cool um, similar backing but you can just see the font from even just the back um, that the font is now it's still uh, put in this uh, direction versus you know a reading a book this way and the font is still small but I can actually read this without my glasses, although it's a bit of a struggle. Again, I don't have great eyesight. My glasses are over here. But I can read this. Like, I can see these keywords of partnership, commitment, passion, desire, union, bonding. There's lots of keywords there. Planet Mercury, Element Air, Zodiac Gemini, Stone Rose Quartz, Red Ruby, and Exam... Alexandrite, sorry. Um, and then I can read this uh, in a pinch without my glasses on. So that is a big um, improvement. Again, as you can see, the font is still small, but it's readable. And if I had my glasses on, I would have no problem reading that. So that is why the box is obviously bigger because um, it, it has a larger guidebook. Um, in it so that it, which was one of the issues that because of the font being so small so that's fantastic I am happy to have a larger guidebook or box in order to get this where I can see it okay so card wise this is not the deck that I use um, this is an un, I thought it'd be better to compare an un, untrimmed version so I have a trimmed version and I have one that's trimmed all the way down to the images um, alone. But my friend Patrick had sent me this one. Um, he ha now has the second edition. But I thought obviously it's better to <laughs> compare um, anything, you know, not trimmed up or cut or anything like that. And so here we have the beautiful, and they are gorgeous. I mean, Again, I have a walk through this deck. I think if you watch that, you will know how I feel about this deck. Um, I didn't find that, you know, spending a year with it made me feel anything less about um, the deck than I felt in the walkthrough. Now, there are um, extra cards, which I always forget about because... Um, I don't use them um, obviously I've just been using this as a tarot deck and so I think they're beautiful um, absolutely stunning but they're not cards that I've used because um, 
Again, I use it strictly as a tarot deck, and so that tends to be how what I do with extras. You can see there's a plastic insert. We have the cards here. I think actually what I normally would do is this, and that way when you put the tarot deck on top, um, then it, which I'm just going to throw that out, um, it, you can just pull just the tarot deck out. It's gilded in gold. Mine are edged in black because um, I trimmed it and the two that I use are as a fully trimmed version um, that Patrick trimmed all of the images, everything off of. Um, that's got a black edging and then I trimmed off um, and um, ended up with something that was more manageable in size and then I black edged it which I just thought was gorgeous. I mean, again, these are beautiful sides. It goes really great with the lemon scot, but it's such an earthy black and white deck that um, I just re <clears throat> really like um, black uh, edging on this particular deck. So uh, we'll leave this out so that we can compare them. Um, the inside has a touch of magic, a touch of shadow, a twinkle of beauty, a spark in tarot, a feeling of mystery, a feeling of ponder shuffle the cards and take a wander the al goliath tarot deck um, there whereas the inside of the second edition has these two antelopes sorry my um, isabel is very barky and the neighborhood is very busy today so lots of interruptions um, the second edition just has the name of the tarot deck written and illustrated by Goliath um, on the inside with this different um, images here of antelopes versus the hippos that we have here. So, I mean, it's gorgeous. Um, either way, both of them are beautiful boxes. Again, lidded box versus magnetic closure box there. So, we'll put that aside. Oh, and there it was a, sorry, um, Nice handy little um, things are always appreciated versus trying to grapple things out. So the book has, uh, both the book before had a really beautiful matte cover and so does this. It has slightly satin, I would say, uh, pages, um, not glossy at all, but like ha it's not matte. It's got like maybe a slight um, satin feel to it, uh, but not glossy or reflective. So we kind of looked at those. The main thing here is that we have the larger font size, still small, but larger font size, which is easier to read. So we kind of talked about those. Sorry, I've got only so much space here. <laughs> going to try to stack some things over here so that brings us to the cards the cards are in like a, a velvet um yeah it's like foam with velvet over the top which is gorgeous it does not have a hole here so cards cannot get under here which i just is one of my pet peeves i don't want to dig cards out um and the, oh they're so cute oh the size is perfect okay so let me open these up, meaning I'm, oops, nope, I got it. And they're edged in black. <laughs> um, so yes, you've got this gorgeous black edging, which to me for this deck is so needed. And it is beautiful matte cardstock. Wow. We Okay, let's go ahead and get the rest of it open. Oh, it's got little thumb things and it has... Um, the ribbons so I love the, the little thumb things there that's really helpful but the ribbons are going to be helpful so you don't have to get all the way down to the bottom when they're out okay so let's put these like this and let's put this over so I, this is great i don't mind the plastic i mean i'm not a fan of a plastic insert but i'd rather have a plastic insert than an insert where the cards are going to fall behind it so i feel like um goliath came up with a great solution to have the foam but not and so that you can have that nice velour feel but not have the cards slide behind it either this size is amazing it's perfection okay <clears throat> So let me zoom in here. 
A, we can see that the backings are changed. Now, this is a gorgeous backing. I have no um, complaints at all about this backing. It looks like a dragon's egg or something like that. It's beautiful. So, you know, this is also beautiful. Like, they're equally beautiful. They're just different. Um, so we have... Um, we have that the backs have changed this feels very earthy now this definitely goes with the gold on the side but i will say that this is a very earthy deck to me and so uh for that because of the feel of this deck of being so animal based so nature based so earthy feeling i do think that this uh look with this brown um, i love the horned moths here the black background the matte Thing. it just feels amazing it feels earthy it feels like the rest of the deck feels so um, again while I think this is actually stunning um, I do think that this really leans into the energetic feel of the deck um, better so you know again both gorgeous but I think you know kudos like that's perfection um, so that's the backs obviously these sides we now have the black um, back the black edging versus the gold again beautiful gold I didn't really have this very long because my version that I use I cut and put black so this feels like home because it's already black um, but this is beautiful and it does match the back some people love gold gilding I love gold gilding and some things but this is such an earthy deck I think the black is perfection which I already said so I won't you know keep reiterating I went ahead and grabbed my copy of the deck just because um, I wanted to compare um, the sizes. Obviously, as you can see, there's not much of a black border. Um, the only reason that I cut this, I actually really like the borders. I like the black and the white borders that you can see here. Um, it really was to make it able to handle it because just taking off that little bit of... Um, you know between this is probably what not even a half an inch um, but it did make it and I have quite large hands for a female so I feel like um, just that little bit made it more man oh I don't really want to do that because I think these are in order yeah, <laughs> I won't do that. But just that little bit did help. And again, I really like the um, black borders on it. So this is my copy of it um, that I use. So, you know, you can see, let's see how we can do this. I mean, it did take a nice little chunk off. It was not an easy trim. Like this is not a, a, an easy trim to do, especially on the bottom part um, of it. So that's kind of a pain, but I did, you know, I did do it. I just took my time. Um, and you can see that it took off what you can see. I um, mean, it did make it far more manageable uh, for shuffling. So that's why I did that. So I don't, I'm comparing these two for more for you guys, um, but for me, so let's take a look here at the size difference. I'm trying to see what will make it most obvious. So you can see there is a significant size difference, um, height-wise, um, more so than width-wise. Where if you take what I would, you know, consider probably about a standard tarot size, um, you can see that it's still significantly wider and it's a little bit taller than a you know a typical smaller tarot deck which i like like i really i this is where the conundrum comes right in these beautifully done decks i like a large card However, there's this really fine line between a large card that's manageable and a large card that isn't manageable. And if you're doing larger spreads, like a nine card that I would traditionally do, um, it does start to impact, you know, whether I use it in a, um, <clears throat> for my professional readings or not because of the space factor, because this is the space that I have to work with. So I think this is a perfect solution. I do think it's still larger than a typical tarot card. I don't think it is. So we can still see the beautiful artwork, but it's going to be much more manageable in size. So even from my trimmed version, right, I'm still um, gaining quite 
quite a lot of um, reduction in space. So I love that. Now you can see, I think, I hope, hopefully you can see this well. Let me zoom in even farther. You can see why many times artists will pick uh, a glossier stock and that's because the glossy stock really causes sometimes this beautiful crisp factor. The lines are really crisp, the blacks and the, are really bold or the colors, it can embolden the colors or rate, make those natural, the colors that the, that the artist sees on their work really shine through in the actual finished production. Because that's generally what an artist, I, I would say, is trying to do is to try to give the viewer the most authentic look to what it might look like in their studio. And so the gloss does provide this this um, enhance it can it pop color and it can pop the the lines here uh, you can see the really crisp beautiful lines um, you can't see it in the camera which is great for for when I use it for reading but in person these kinds of decks give me a headache to use for clients because in person because you're seeing it straight up and down with the camera right I'm at an angle and the way that my lights are this provides a glow layer um, that goes straight into my eyes and after doing a uh, half an hour reading or something like that um, it actually gives me a headache so this type of finish is not something that I'm going to use with client readings because I'm going to end up with a headache and if you, if you extrapolate that over two or three or four readings in a day um, that is going to really give me a headache, right? So this isn't, a t this gloss does make the artwork really pop, um, but for some of us, depending on our light situation, it causes that glare, um, whereas this provides no glare. Now, I will say, yes, this is crisp, crisper and bolder. You can see the blackest blacks are not going to be as black. Um, hopefully you can see that in person. The blackest blacks are not as black as the satin. satin. Um, but the lightest whites are wider than, so if you look in those clouds there, the whites are brighter. Um, the blacks are not quite as deep because of this gorgeous matte finish. I will say they're both gorgeous, right? They really are. However, this to me is, uh, is stunning. Like I think this is perfection. I feel like I'm looking at, you know, like a charcoal sketched piece because obviously paper is not shiny or glossy. So this feels like I'm holding the artwork in my hand, which is a really neat experience. So I understand why artists do use this paper, this type of paper, because it does, especially with colors, but you can even see it in the black and white. It just makes everything pop and the col the lines are so crisp, but this is stunning. Um, absolutely stunning. It kind of changes it from more of a photograph look to more of a, I'm holding a piece of artwork in my hand feel to it. Um, so, but they're again, both gorgeous, but for me personally, this just brings it into a size and into a glare factor that makes it usable. And I actually really love the look of this, even though beautiful, but um, I just feel like this shifts something a little bit. You can see, hopefully you can't see, the cardstock on the new deck is slightly thicker because it's hard to show this. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it, but the stacks are, Mm, maybe half not I don't know if that's even half an inch but this this stack is higher than this so this means this cardstock is thicker um, on that I had no issues with this cardstock um, it's held up really well it um, being so big you almost need that flexibility so that you have any chance of shuffling it um, this feels amazing as well it kind of feels like wild unknown kind of cardstock um, beautiful mat. It's not sticky mat. Um, it's gorgeous. Okay, so there you can see uh, the differences here. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside for a minute and zoom out here a little bit. So I'm going to shuffle this. Um, again, I'm not going to do a walkthrough of this because I've already done walkthroughs. Oh, no, no, no. Let me come back. Let me come back. Bring it back. Bring it back. I did want to show some other changes here. 
Now, I really struggled like at whether or not I was going to purchase. I was waiting for my friend Patrick to get his um, before I decided if I was going to repurchase it because I have gone through and trimmed this. Um, so it works for me. And I also have one fully trimmed. So, you know, it brings it more like this. So I have one fully trimmed. And so I was kind of back and forth about it, and um, Goliath had contacted me and said he'd wanted me, he knows how much I love this deck, and that he was going to send me one. Um, and I was like, I would love to do a comparison of the two, because I was really back and forth whether or not I was going to get it, because I have them, all right? I have several copies of the Al Goliath. So I was like, do I really need another one? Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out has changed is that there was a second uh, fool so of title. So we had a fool kind of in a, it almost looks in like an Arabic font or, uh, I don't know, kind of a magical or Arabic style font um, here. And then you had the Zero the Fool, and then you had the Eternal Vagabond, and then uh, I believe this is, uh, the copy right here. Um, you can see it a little bit better here. Let me put my glasses on. Yeah, that I think is a uh, copyright. It's very tiny. I am not a fan of copyrights on the fronts of deck. Again, I understand decks. I understand why uh, people do that, and I prefer it to be the artist doing it versus like U.S. Games, which isn't even the artist. But this is so small, it's never really bothered me. Even though that's a pet peeve of mine, it's never bothered me because it's so small. Um, so the only thing that has changed is that this secondary title has been removed. So you have zero the fool instead of El fool. Uh, the Magician, because this is the English version of it, so it's not that blending of, um, like this was The Fool, uh, and then we had Al Fool or Al Magician, but they, because it's the Al Goliath Tarot, um, I think was the, the purpose there, um, but, but he has changed that to just being The Fool, but it's in the secondary font, and then you have the Eternal Vagabond here. Um, so I think that's an improvement. I don't think it's necessary to have two fool, you know, two um, titles um, on it, and so I think that that's an improvement um, on that. What I'm really happy to see, so I wanted to point that out because that's the other change between the original. Um, what I'm really happy that he kept was the black and white, different black and white, some are black and some are white borders. And I am so happy to see that those remain because I actually really love the look of that. Um, oops, these are the extra ones. So it looks like you still get, let me, Sacred Heart. Yes, uh, ooh, I love that. Page of Swords. Yeah, okay. So these are the extra cards um, that you get. Um, and you still get those. I don't know if there's any new ones. The Shedding Snake. I mean, they're beautiful. So I don't have anything against these. I love this nature. The Seed of Life. The Sacred Fire. The Karmic Soul Tribe is for the family. Actually, I'm going to leave this out because I'm going to put that in my ancestor space. Um, I think it's gorgeous. Uh, hidden Inner Strength. I love this with the cat and that. Uh, masks, the hidden wolf, the d shadow self, the shaman is just gorgeous, the star seed, the sage. Again, these are, and then you have your yes and no's. Um, these are great, and you could use these in sacred space. You could sh just choose to shuffle them in. Um, I don't choose to shuffle them in just because I use this as a tarot deck, um, but they are beautiful. So you still get those um, there, and then you have your um, tarot deck, obviously, here. But I am really, I love how this looks, and like here's this one I think that I was, yeah. So you can see the blackest blacks are, are not there, but look at how much brighter the sun, the moon, sorry, the moon is. Um, in person, the moon shines brighter. So you get the whites whiter, um, but the blacks not as black, but I don't believe it takes away from it. It's still quite 
um, black and gorgeous and you still see that beautiful contrast so yes the gloss does provide that pop and that defining energy but it's just beautiful I feel like I'm handling his artwork here um, and again I get no reflection back at me which makes this usable for me um, even for client readings which is fantastic so let me give this a shuffle my guess is it's going to be a, with the edging it's going to be a little bit sticky at first um, but that yeah see I can grab this I'm going to scroll out sorry I can easily grab this oh yes okay that was badly done because I was watching my trying to watch too closely what it was going to do let's let's give it another go here this is a nice nice shuffle look at that why I riffle because I like that nice mix that was not a clumpy mix at all now again do as I say not as I do you know here's my caveat I riffle shuffle everything and I understand that that is going to age the sides of my cards and I'm okay with that that's something that I uh, choose for myself to I actually like a deck that looks like it's been used I actually um, like the shuffle that I get with a riffle I know people get morally offended by my riffle shuffling but you just can't get that kind of a mix with um, overhand shuffling you're gonna shuffle in little clumps at the very least um, and so for me, it's a trade-off. And again, I am happy with the look of a deck that's been used. So, but be aware that if you riffle shuffle something, oh, it shuffles amazing. If you riffle shuffle something with an edge, your edge is going to get worn um, faster. You, it's, think about it. Your, your, your edge is going to get shoved. You know, if you're going like this, you're still you know this you can do it very carefully I've seen some people who like shove it into the cards that your edge is going to get worn as well because you're shoving the card in there obviously this is the least um, detrimental to the card however if a card stock is good uh, if an edging is good it will age beautifully I always point to my my fountain tarot which has a shiny silver uh, edging on it and beautiful cardstock the first edition fountain tarot and it has been riffle shuffled here and back again and it is yes you can tell it's been shuffled here and back again but it's aged beautifully um, and so a good cardstock can handle it and I feel like this is going to handle it it's you can even bridge it it's and it's a thick deck so gorgeous love it I'm really happy with this cardstock okay so let's just lay this out here in my traditional you know instead of a Celtic cloth cross this is my traditional so we have the ten of wands am I scrolled all the way out nope okay there we go so if I was doing a reading this is where it would be at um, and then I have my past and I have my future you can up a little bit than I normally am but we'll we'll adjust let's see let's just adjust right now although I usually let's be fair to the out oh, this card this is generally how I'm doing this there we go okay so this card would have gone here I'll spread it out a little bit all right so that is my fire this is I love this card this is my fire this is my air this is my water which really needs to all come down here that's my water I love this queen of cups um, and this is my earth position so we have our present, past, future, fire, air, water, earth. And then sometimes it's as above, so below. Sometimes it's a do and a don't do. It just depends on the question at hand. Um, and bam. And I can even generally with larger cards, I'll move it up to the top of the viewfinder here. I know this means nothing to anybody else. I'm just playing myself. So now I can fit the whole thing 
um, I, into my reading desk I'm getting zero glare I'm getting the beautiful blacks and whites I mean look at this Knight of Cups is so stunning the Page of Swords the King of Cups they're just beautiful look at this world card yeah, I just love this deck and now it is going to be usable. I mean, this Eight of Swords is, he's in, in a pickle, but he can get out of this. He can get out of this, or she can get out of this because she, her eyes look like she's a she. Um, is this the Queen of Cups in a Swords moment? We don't know. Um, but she can get out of it. Look at those big paws. She's going to back back down into the water and go find another way to slam her way open. Or she's going to slam that. Look at how her paw is on the sword. She could slam that up into the ice and crack some of that ice even further. She's got options here. She's just got to not panic and use her mind. Um, love this deck so 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 much i can't even tell you again i spent a lot of time uh with this deck and uh it remains creepy devil creepy devil he has eaten the snake nope snake's still alive uh the master of lies you think he's a nice little goat who doesn't have teeth and just gonna eat eat grass but nope he's a creepy he's a creepy guy ten of pentacles i love this wheel um, it's just beautiful. It's a beauty. I love this death. Two of Swords. That was an interesting one to sort of reconcile with. Um, but it's. I love the Empress where you can see the baby. Uh, the King of Swords. I mean, he's doing what needs to be done. Nature is, you know, animals eat animals. This is part of nature. I love Judgment. Such a powerful card. Um so sad of a five of pentacles uh very sad but the light is coming i feel like hope is gonna come through i love the star card anyways again i have a walkthrough of this which i will link below but it is beautiful the interesting thing is i'm just thinking of this as i'm looking at it you know i have a the animal colette baron reads um animal oracle that she has that i use because it has the most animals one of the things that i don't like about that is there's little crowns and earrings and things on it and it's one of the things i don't like about that deck this deck actually has a lot of that but it's very different feeling to it because these feel very shamanic in nature, right? The alchemical master, he's got like a pipe here. Um, this is similar in that there's, you know, there's, there's flowers and things on, on its, you know, wearing kind of crowns and things. I'm trying to find some other examples that I just would look at. You know, the sunflower around the bear, not my absolute favorite, but that gives you that idea. Um, again, the owl here. So you have that in this deck, but the way that it's done in this deck for me, I love this. Um, Nine of Cups is fantastic. Or like this, she's this this cat has this high priestess has earrings on. Um, for me, with this deck, it actually has a very shamanic feel to it, a very um, sort of healer vibe to it. And so it's funny that one thing that I find quite irritating in one deck, um, for me, really just adds to a, a, a feel of earthy shamanic healer um, kind of energy to another deck um, again with this one being one I spent a lot of time both of them I spend a lot of time with so yeah okay I'm, I'm I'm rambled on actually longer than I had intended to I just wanted you to kind of see what the differences are um, I'm really happy to be because I actually like these borders again I like the white borders and I like the black borders I didn't trim mine um, because I didn't like the borders I was trying to make it so I could handle it better um, and sometimes I just don't like the borders and that's why I trim sometimes I trim because I can't shuffle well and that was the case of this this is then a look at the uh, um, comparison between the first edition and the second edition um, Al Goliath